John asked bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asked fish, will he give him a serpent? That was a staple of the diet of the people that lived around the Sea of Galilee. There in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 17, they said to him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes because that's what a daily lunch meal might look like in that part of the world. And actually still today would look like that. Bread and salted fish is a daily piece of the diet for the people living in Israel. So this is a basic, this is not extravagant, this is a need, this is not a want, this is not a tantrum, this is simply a hunger that needs to be met. And what do we as fathers do? We take care of it because that's what dads do. We take care of it. And perhaps hidden in this request, there's something more. Because you remember that Jesus, when he was telling the devil that he wouldn't turn the stone into bread, another no in the scripture to an ask, he, del- he answered and said to the devil, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Our job then as fathers is to give more than just bread to our children. Our job as fathers is to give our children God's word to teach them our faith. Well, I get ahead of myself because we have to go now to the gifts. And look at the gifts that he gives. The father gives the good gift or he gives the evil gift. Is it possible? What man of you, he says in verse 9, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Now you understand the bread that Jesus is referring to here is not our loaf big mounded loaf that's puffed up with yeast and things that make stuff rise and salts and things. No, this is a flat loaf that they would make every day in Israel. That pita bread that is so common now. That's the kind of loaf that they would that he's talking about. So that flat, round piece of bread is what the child is asking for. That would be very easily mistaken for a stone in Israel because there are lots of flat, round stones. So it might be something easily mistaken, but not by a father. And not by a father who had a hungry child who just said, Father, I'm hungry. Could I have a piece of bread? He would certainly discriminate between the bread and the stone because this meets the child's need. It helps him grow. It helps him gain strength, become mature. Take on the challenges of life. Take on the challenges of one day parenting. Take on the challenges of building his own home and family. But as I suggested, the best gift is the gift of faith, the word of God. Do you teach your child to give? I started this message with an illustration that happened to us of giving. Do you teach that in your home? Do you teach tithing in your home? Do you teach almsgiving in your home? Do you teach your child to pray in your home? Do you give the gift of fasting to your children in your home? Do you teach your children to respect the Lord's Day? Do you teach them to study the Word, to attend to preaching, to attend to worship, and to give themselves devotionally to their Savior every day? Do you give them the means to respond to Jesus' call? That's the true job of a father in the home. Yes, it's my job to provide for my children and to make sure that they have bread and fish. But the thing that's going to last them for an eternity is the faith that I impart. And if I am not intentional about giving them my faith, I might as well be giving them a stone in place of the bread because the stone's going to do exactly the same thing. It's just going to generate more hunger. It's going to exacerbate the starving nature of that child. He's going to look at the stone and say, what am I supposed to do with this? I can't eat it. It's going to make it even worse. Fathers, your job is to challenge your children to serve the Lord and to take up their cross and follow Jesus. But, of course, that's not just a job for dads. That's also a job for moms as well. 
But dads are the important ones to do that. Dads are the significant leaders in the house. If dad is faithless, children will be faithless. They will want to do as dad does. If dad teaches faith, if he teaches giving, if he teaches praying, if he teaches fasting, if he teaches respect for the Lord's day, if he teaches studying the word and devotional attention, if he, if he teaches attending to preaching and attending to worship, ladies and gentlemen, guess what the child will do? All of those things. Because they want to be like dad. Dad's the leader in the home. And so no matter what dad does, that's what that child will run after. So what are you giving your children? Are you giving them bread and fish or are you giving them a stone and a serpent? And that leads me then to the evil gifts. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? So many parents today want their children to choose these things for themselves without any input from the parent whatsoever. I'm so tired of hearing parents tell me that one person's this and the other person in the marriage is that. And Well, we're just going to let our children choose whatever they want. Guess what? They'll choose nothing. That's what you've led them to. That's what you've taught them, nothing. So that's exactly what they're going to be taught. So many parents today don't want to give them or are lazy for some reason or faithless, and so they don't give their children bread and fish. They give them baseball. They give them football. They give them all the many sports that so many parents are running after today so that their child can maybe one day be in the pros. And so they pass up every opportunity to teach them faith, hope, and love. That's the evil gift. The evil gift is given by the lazy, faithless parent. And we have produced a generation of lazy, faithless children. It's like having a hungry child with a stone. It just magnifies the hunger. It cannot be eaten. It's a worthless gift. And that is the best case scenario for the lazy and the faithless. But the worst case is the serpent. You see, the serpent isn't like a stone. It doesn't just lay there, unedible. No, the serpent is aggressive and it bites. What parent would place their child knowingly in a pit of poisonous snakes? Well, you, we would hope none. But sometimes our bad gifts are so spiritually wicked and deceptive that they influence our children to sin just like the serpent did to Eve. We influence them contrary to the word of God because that's what tempts us. That's what delights us. And so because we're trapped or we're caged by our own sins, we invite our children into that cage as well, and they too become trapped by them, and we give them evil gifts. But Jesus says here, What man is there of you? Whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Of course, the answer to that is there's not a man who would do that. Or if he asked a fish, will he give him a serpent? Of course, there's not a man that would do that. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts. The question I think for all of us today is, do we really know how to give the good gift? It's time for us to give good gifts to our children, and it's not too late. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. Whether you have them or not, you can still give good gifts. You just need to make a decision to do it. And then I want to close with this. The very last thing in this passage, Jesus says, How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Would you like to give good gifts? Start right there. Because this word, these words, how much more is a promise? If natural fathers who are evil know how to give good gifts, what do you think God can do? Oh, he does gifts like what we saw this past week at Creek Road Baptist Church. Abundantly, be, uh, above and beyond all that we can ask or think. Completely outside of our thoughts, our processes. God is able to do that kind of of good giving, multiplying small gifts and making them expand exponentially. That's the kind of God we serve. So how much more shall your heavenly shall your Father which is in heaven, ladies and gentlemen, is a promise. If it's natural for fathers to give, 
What is it like for God? Well, it's natural for him to give too, but man, does he give good gifts. He gives the best gifts. He will give good things to them that do what? There's our word again, right? It comes at the very last of this passage. He began with it in verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. And you're thinking, oh yeah, okay, okay. Ask, seek, uh, I've heard that before. But then we come down here to the end. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things? What does that mean, good things? I think that's sort of an open-ended question, isn't it? What good thing do you need? What good thing can you ask? What can you imagine? What need do you have in your life? What do your children need? What do your grandchildren need? What is it that God has for them by way of you asking for them? You see, it's never too late to start. How much more then shall your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask? And the only thing that prevents you from receiving good things for your children, for your grandchildren, the only thing that prevents you from being able to give good things is this, your faith. Do you believe in Jesus? Because this passage right here is for the believer. If you believe in Jesus and you pray in Jesus' name, as I just told Alan Barker a few minutes ago, when he got done praying, he prayed in Jesus' name. And I said, oh, you prayed with power today because you prayed in Jesus' name. God himself will give. Jesus will meet you. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.